everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm going to bring you along as I make pumpkin pie. So I'm going to walk you through a version of pumpkin pie that fits with the GAPS diet. I'm also going to talk about the ways that I also like to make it another version that fits with nourishing traditions, although anybody will enjoy the GAPS version as well. So let's jump in and get started. So I started off by cooking a whole pumpkin. I did this in the oven, really, really easy. All I did is break off the stem and put it in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for one and a half hour. Didn't cut it or do anything else. It is a good idea actually to poke the top of it a few times with a fork to let out steam. Otherwise, super easy. Put it, Just put it in there whole, let it bake, and then when it comes out, it's nice and soft, and I'm going to cut this open and scoop it out in just a minute. But first, we're going to start on the pie crust. One quick note about pumpkin. This is especially important if you're on the GAPS diet. Canned pumpkin is actually not true pumpkin. It's actually a form of butternut squash, and it's always nutritionally superior to be using whole fresh pumpkins anyway, rather than anything canned. And so I like to go for this real whole fresh pumpkin as often as I can. Also, um, we grew these pumpkins ourselves in our garden, so that makes them all the better. So the first thing I'm, that I'm going to do is to start working on the crust for this GAPS version of pumpkin pie. Another way that you can do it is you can make a traditional pie crust. I have a recipe up already where I show how to make a lard pie crust, so if you're not on GAPS, that can be a really delicious option. Or if you are on GAPS, you'll wanna watch for how I make this one, although like I said, it's delicious for anybody on or off GAPS. Another really fast and easy way to make a pumpkin pie type dessert is to not even worry about the crust at all. Just butter your baking dish or pie dish and put the filling in there and just have crustless pie. It's also really delicious. So for the crust, I have my oven preheating at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to add two heaping cups of shredded coconut to my bowl. To that, I'm going to add one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then I'm going to crack one egg and just beat it a little bit before adding it to the rest of the bowl. And then I'm going to pour that in and mix this together. You can also make nut flour crusts, which can be tasty as well. Something like pecans is especially good with pumpkin. I usually these days opt for a coconut version when I'm doing gapped things just because nuts require a lot more prep work. We like to ferment them, sprout them, soak them, all that kind of stuff, which is a great idea. It makes them more delicious, more digestible, more nutritious, but it is a lot of work. And so when I'm busy, I oftentimes will just go for the coconut version of things. And that's, you'll see that reflected on my website with my recipes. I have a lot of things that use different coconut products. Next, I'm going to add this crust mixture to my pie dish. And then I'm just going to press it down as evenly as I can. I like to start with the bottom and then work my way to the sides. And if you've been with me before, you might recognize this pie crust from the Gaps Key Lime Pie that I also have up, which I can link down below or you can find on my channel as well. I'm going to go ahead and start on the filling. I'm gonna start by just kind of breaking open my pumpkin. And then I'm just going to try to scoop out just those stringy parts and the seeds, of course you can, you can save pumpkin seeds and roast them if you want. And then for our pie recipe, we're looking for one cup of the cooked pumpkin. And so I'm going to be scraping that and measuring it. And 
And then when it comes to mixing this together, you can do it a variety of ways, but my favorite is to put it all into my blender, this high-powered blender that I have, a Blendtec, and blend it all up that way. Then you get a very smooth pumpkin pie filling, and it's just really easy to mix everything together that way. So I'm gonna add my pumpkin. I'm going to add three eggs. And then for the sweetener, you have a couple different options. You can use honey on gaps. When I'm heating something, I prefer to not use honey. Let's talk about that for a second too because sometimes there's some misunderstanding about honey and baking. So Dr. Natasha says that when you heat honey, raw honey, you of course kill the enzymes and so you lose those. But she says it doesn't turn toxic or anything because I know that there's some information out there about when you heat honey, it turns toxic, and Dr. Natasha says no, it doesn't turn toxic, you just lose the enzyme. So you can, but a better option whenever you're heating things is to use something that's okay with heat. So my one of my favorites for baking on the GAPS diet is date syrup. So I'm going to go ahead and add a half a cup of date syrup. If you had whole dates that you wanted to use, you could do that. You would just need to soak them in hot water. First, make sure the pits are out, blend them in the blender before you add everything else, and then you could proceed. You would probably want to use around 12 whole dates if you were going to do that. Next, we're going to add our spices. First, I'm going to add one quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm using nice mineral salt, Baja Gold, very tasty. I'm going to add one quarter teaspoon of allspice. If you had a pumpkin pie spice blend that you liked that doesn't have any additives, then you could use that as well. I think you would use probably two teaspoons of that, I believe. I'm also going to add a quarter teaspoon of ginger, a quarter teaspoon of cloves, ground cloves, one teaspoon of cinnamon. Next, I'm going to add one cup of cream. Now, if you're on gaps, you wanna make sure that you culture your cream first before adding it. And then we are ready to blend everything together. And then we just pour the filling into the pie shell. And then it's gonna go into the 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for about 45 minutes. I usually like to check on it after 30 minutes. You want to be able to insert a knife into the center of it and have it come out clean. Okay, I opted for giving it a little bit more time. I think total it was in there for about an hour and 15 minutes. Another option would be to start at a high temperature like 425 for 15 minutes and then lower it to 350. That would shorten up that baking time to more like 45 minutes. I didn't want the really high temperatures to get the crust too brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool for a bit and then I'm gonna come back and slice it and show you what it looks like. All right, so let's go ahead and slice this pie. This is really delicious, served with some whipped cream on the top. If you're on gaps, you can culture it first and then whip it, or you don't even have to whip it when it's nice and thick like that, when it's cultured, it's delicious on top. Either way, I hope that you enjoy this recipe. I hope that you try it out this holiday season. And if you do, leave me a comment and let me know how you liked it. Check out that description box for links to all the places that I like to buy ingredients for this recipe, as well as free eBooks and other goodies. I also have a link to my brand new membership. It's a coaching membership and it's a great place to get community and inspiration for people trying to live a real food lifestyle. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would enjoy it. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time, bye.